Hello and welcome back and today I want to talk about the two bay Terramaster Thunderbolt the TD2 330 it is a NAS that we talked about here on the channel a little while ago I think it was about mid last year we first started talking about this after Computex when we saw a lot of the solutions from Terramaster so this isn't actually a new product a lot of the times I'll talk about there's something on the table you can kind of take it as read that it's a fairly new item but this is a device that's almost a year old and the reason I've got it back here on the channel is largely because it has suddenly seen a resurgence. I don't know whether it's one of a million factors in 2019 and early 2020 that's made people a little bit worried about the amount of money in their pockets, but there's no denying that more cost-effective storage solutions are becoming very, very desirable. Now, there's a lot of mini factors for this, definitely at the brand end, and a lot of that has to do with storage just getting simpler, it's getting easier, and the components like any hardware that's released at the height of its fame, ends up becoming quite affordable. And that's where companies like Terramaster live very, very well. We talked about a lot of their NAS solutions and some of their DAS solutions in the past. And the fact that they're a brand that has escalated and evolved very, very quickly in a short space of time. And their DAS solutions are very much like their NAS solutions in that they give you a very, very solid product that might not appear in every box ticking way to compete at the highest level with the likes of promise and robo but at the price point they are like this one arriving at about 230 that includes that it is a two bay raid enabled thunderbolt solution with daisy chaining and everything you would expect from a thunderbolt solution at a great price so although it's not trying to compete with the very tippity top what we're seeing is it's it's aiming for the middle of the market but the top of the market is starting to shift down and that's why we're seeing a solution like this suddenly becoming um popular again with a resurgence so what i wanted to do is take another close look at it and also we're going to be doing some bench testing with this device hopefully against uh the lassie um too big station as well and we're going to be looking at how it deals with hard drives and ssds in that raid one environment because if you do look at the official spec pages of Terramaster, and you may already have know this before coming this uh, to this video, they're a little modest about their speed limitations. And by limitations, I just mean what they say is the you know the speed you're going to get. What you may notice a lot of companies that promote Thunderbolt products is they have a tendency to really lean into that Thunderbolt three portion, the 40 gigabits per second. But that is a theoretical maximum, and you need some serious throughput and media inside to take advantage of that. Case in point, if you took a 5-bay NAS, populated it with NVMe SSDs, it still wouldn't give you that 40 gigabits per second. And not all of that has to do with friction, and a lot of it is to do with the processors handling the data, because you can have media like some of the NVMe stuff we've been seeing that has promised um, well in excess of 3,000 megabytes per second read. But at the same time, if you don't have a processor and an architecture wrapped around that media, you're not going to get it, even in the right raid. <clears throat> so when you look at the Terramaster pages, they do seem to be very modest about the speeds. They talk about kind of four to 600 megabytes per second, even though with the right media, you can get higher than those speeds. It's something I'm hoping that my software overviews are going to show. But I've talked enough. Let's talk about the product. Um, again, standard blue box packaging we've seen from Terramaster many, many times in the past. Just kind of standard boxing there. Inside, you've got an external PSU. You've got the unit. You've got instructions and an accessory box. It's fairly petite, fairly standard. And again, standard box with a label on the side. So... Take a look inside. Bring me to there. Open this bad boy up. Have a look at the accessories box first. And with our Terra Master, we receive an external power brick and US and, and cable. And I have already used this box before. Don't worry, it doesn't arrive this unraveled. That's all me. You've got a big old external brick there. Bag it comes in. You've also got an accessory bag. The unit arrives with a Thunderbolt cable, which is weirdly not something all vendors include something that never ceases to amaze me that we're still in an age where people can buy an external thunderbolt box and they don't supply you with a cable which again madness on top of that 
We've got screws for installing two and a half inch and three and a half inch media, so hard drives and SSD. Remember, this is a SATA enabled device, so you can only use SATA based media. So again, those of you that are used to NVMe or, or SAS 12 gigabit, this isn't gonna be the device for you. More screws there for the internals of the chassis and a quick start installation guide and warranty information. Oh, and a teeny tiny screwdriver that can be used for the physical raid dip switch on the rear as well as a reset pin included inside the bag. We'll go into maybe a little bit more detail about that later. Finally inside the box we have the unit itself and again I know there is a lot of mixed opinion about the chassis design from Terra Masters Nazis. They kind of stuck with the same two, four, five and eight bay chassis and I know you're not one over a lot of you. I've got to be honest I'm not hugely bowled over by the design. Um, I like it. It's better than it was. If you look at some of the early generation two bay stuff from Terra Master, those chassis were painful to look at. And at least this one is kind of nicely designed in terms of shape, structure. It's got that handle at the top that I've never quite personally understand. But I don't work in the industries where this would be prevalent. We've got two bays there in the front, trays as well. We've got the handle, we've got loads of ventilation there on the base of the device. Great to see that there. And that's really what you'd expect from this. So before we go any further, let's talk a little bit about this device. Well, it arrives with a hardware RAID inside. That means you can use JBOD, which isn't really a RAID, which is just a bunch of drives. But you've also got RAID 0 and RAID 1. RAID 0 combines all the available storage into one giant storage pool and volume which uh, or if you set it as one volume and then you've got that data and you do generally get the best read and write speeds from RAID 0 unfortunately you have no redundancy so if one of those drives a hard drive or an SSD fails your data is lost to you which is a real bummer now the alternative to that is RAID 1 a RAID 1 is when the drives are kind of mirrored but not really basically all read and write operations happen identically to the disk. You do still get great read and write speeds, but you lose 50% of your overall storage because you've got two hard drives at the same capacity, but with the same data. So technically, you can't store more than one drive's worth of data. Uh, the device arrives with support of Thunderbolt via USB-C. We'll talk about that a little bit more later in the video. As well as that, daisy chaining is enabled, so you can add this to a range of devices from a single Thunderbolt port on a PC or Mac system. So you've got your port on your MacBook perhaps, this port is plugged into this, and then after that, you can use the second Thunderbolt port on it to plug to maybe a docking station. That docking station can then plug to a monitor. There's even a display port on the rear of this device for including uh, a high spec Thunderbolt display item onto this. So, talk a little bit more about this. And again, 230 NECA, not terrible so far. Um, let's have a look at the trays. They are plastic trays, a little bit disappointing. I quite like, you know, the metal outside. I was kind of hoping they'd be metal trays. But at the same time, again, there is a school of thought about metal trays inside a metal chassis without sufficient shock absorption inside. You're going to get a lot more noise. And because this is Thunderbolt, whether you use the cable that's with it or not, you can't really get logically usable Thunderbolt cables, more than uh, Thunderbolt 3 USB-C cables, for more than about three to five meters max. There are other optical cables you can go for, which are horrendously expensive, but the majority of you are gonna be within, again, one to five meters of this device. So metal trays inside a metal chassis making lots of noise would be a bit of a pain, let's be honest. Um, there's two trays inside, let's remove that other tray. And again, screw holes for two and a half inch and three and a half inch media. And the device will function with a single hard drive if you so choose. If we have a look inside, you can see lots of ventilation there moving all the way through. We've got those two SATA bays at the rear, and that's really it. You've got kind of the runners for those trays that are inside. If we look at the front of this device, we can see just on camera there, if we can just get that angle just right, LED indicator holes there that will give us real-time information about our storage and power of the device, as well as our power button. Now, they've embossed their logo on the side of saying embossed. It's completely flat even. It's just stuck on there. They've not gone the Synology route with the idea of, you know, making a physical logo on there that's ventilated. But I think they're the only brand out there that do that. Um, and we've got a ton of ventilation there on the base of the device. Again, rubberized feet to keep things nice and safe. And 
If we look at the rear of the device, actually I haven't even mentioned it, weird little handle again, not a fan, but I know there are people out there that use it. I'm seeing more and more storage devices from top tier brands like Promise, uh, and even Drobo as well, having options of carrying, although Drobo arrived with this weird canvas bag, uh, whereas you've got the mid-range companies like Arika and Terramaster that are also including portable means of their devices. Indeed, some of the bigger brands out there are now putting direct DC input on the rear of their devices that allow you to use those portable battery packs when you're on a shoot. So you can see them moving this way, and I'm pretty sure Terramaster is going to go that way too. If we look at the rear of this device, let's get the lighting just right. We've got our power port here at the top. We've got that display port for utilizing the device um, in a daisy chain environment and adding a monitor that the other kind of Mac chain can now have access. We've got those two Thunderbolt 3 USB-C ports there. I'm going to double check during the testing about compatibility with USB 3.1 Gen 2, but I do think it will support it. But hold off your judgment on that. And we have got that second USB Type-C Thunderbolt port there at the bottom. You've also got a fan for active airflow through the device. And hopefully, when I do the speed test video, I'll have the laptop on this table with this device a meter away, and you'll be able to pick up just how noisy that fan is going to be. But that's about it, really. The device itself is, you know, comparable to the likes of the Lacey 2 Big, certainly comparable to the majority of 2 bay um, RAID enabled Thunderbolt 3 solutions out there. And as I've mentioned before, I'm a big fan of Terramaster. I kind of like a lot of what they do. I'm not going to say that what they produce can, you know, outdo the likes of Drobo, the likes of um, Enterprise Level Pegasus companies, or even in now Synology and Kinect, but that's not their intention. What they are providing is a solid third option. It's the idea of not being able to, you don't have to choose just between the top tier brands when you've got another brand here that is rising in popularity and utilization all the time getting bigger each time as well so that's the other reason why i feature them on the channel because it's nice to piggyback off something big you know but ultimately the device itself is available now from amazon and a bunch of other retailers as well um, i haven't even touched on the raid configuration there on the bottom i have to bring this nice and close to the camera i don't know if you can see that on the base of the device there's our dip switch and when you're using the device, you can reinitialize the device into a new RAID configuration if you choose. But you'll be pleased to hear that you can't just play with that switch and wipe the data. You have to make sure to reset the array first. So it isn't a case of a switch that can be easily touched on or maneuvered, and therefore your data may be getting lost. It has the same reset pin as any other storage device from a small, medium, or large tier storage brand. And on the side of the device, we've got real-time information there to give us an indication of how exactly we reset our RAID or set the RAID up for the first time. So, I'm gonna wrap things up here, getting ready for the software overview and speed testing of this device. But otherwise, if you have enjoyed this video, click like. If you wanna learn more, click subscribe. If you wanna see more about this device or even get one for yourself, go to the links in the article. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.